explaining some electronic circuits and things like that. So today, uh, participants, you are going to listen to one of the most, uh, what you call the practically working uh, faculty member in our campus, uh, Professor Sivaraj. So welcome, Professor Sivaraj. Congrats to the organizing team, uh, uh, Sridhar and uh, Jayeshree also. Uh, so let me welcome you all. Uh, so this is a series of webinars are happening in the Polytechnic College, especially this month is crowded with a lot of webinars. I have been presiding over uh, at least two webinars per day, morning uh, one and uh, afternoon one. So that uh, that keeps me very busy uh, also, uh, in spite of uh, the lot of activities that are uh, being given by Director of Technical Education during this lockdown period. So let us make use of this particular uh, opportunity and then try to utilize our uh, time in a very useful manner. Uh, so let me also welcome uh, all the participants uh, for this uh, topic celebrating real-time embedded system design using ARM core. And I think uh, we have a lot of facilities available at the PSG College of Technology. Uh, the laboratory is full-fledged and it is uh, so unfortunate that we could not have a, a what you call it as a, a physical face-to-face uh, -face, uh, what you call it as meeting or seminar. But anyway, I think uh, Professor Sivaraj will do the needful to ensure that uh, the participants get the maximum out of this particular program. So let us keep ourselves engaged and then see that uh, during this lockdown period, we spend it in a very, very useful manner. So students, you can really uh, get a lot of information through this, uh, those person. And the faculty members, as usual, you can look for uh, the new things that are happening around and probably try to incorporate these new topics in the uh, coming syllabus revision, maybe in 2021. So let me wish the webinar the all the best. Uh, thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the encouraging and inspiring words. I now request the resource person, Dr. Shivraj, to kindly address the participants. So good morning, all. And uh, I'm very happy to be with you all. It's a great opportunity for me. Uh, first of all, I should like to thank uh, our principal uh, because I'm working with our principal for the past uh, 20 years. Always uh, principal is an encouraging uh, professor and it's a good team to be with and I am I feel that I'm fortunate to be with uh, this team and it's an opportunity for us uh, to interconnect together and uh, I thank uh, the HOD madam for giving me this opportunity. So I am working with HOD Madam for the past 5-6 years and we are conducting so many things and this is one among that which is happening in the online which is again it's a great opportunity for me and again I thank uh, the, org other, the organizing team Jai Sri Madam and Sridhar Sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity so let us celebrate because it's a celebration as Principal Sir rightly said so being here in a lockdown situation but uh, working together uh, from the home itself, connecting together from the home. So right now there are 87 people are interconnected together, 88 people are interconnected together to celebrate this uh, embedded system, the two real-time embedded systems. So let us do our level best to make things happen in a best way. So thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. And thank you, team, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Let me do my best. Uh, again, thank you for the participants for uh, being with us. Let me start my presentation. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we can discuss in detail and there are a lot of plans available to keep us connected forever after this uh, webinar also okay so with your permission uh, let me start my presentation sir yeah proceed sir all the best thank you sir thank you very much sir i'm just starting presenting okay uh, once again i welcome you all for this uh, grand celebration here uh, the title given again here is Real-time embedded system term designed using ARM core. So first, let us understand what is embedded system system first, and what is I IoT. In a simple words, as simple as A B C D. So let us see some simple examples of embedded system. So the, the examples are given in the screen, the TV remote control, printer, 
weighing scale, LCD projector, currency counter, calculator and refrigerators are the simple examples of embedded system which we use in our day to day life. That is why the examples is given. So whatever example is given, it has to be in the user friendly way and it is should be in the day to day life we should be using this. Okay, so by looking at this products, by looking at this products, we are clear that embedded system means it is a dedicated product. Why I am saying it is dedicated because remote control is dedicated to switch on the TV and switch off the TV. Printer is dedicated to print. Similarly, weighing scale is dedicated to do measure the weight of an object. So the printer cannot do the remote control job as well as the remote control cannot do the printer job. In this context, embedded system is a product which is first one and this product is a dedicated product something like that we have to understand right now okay so now let us understand what is embedded system in a simple way so what is embedded system we can say embedded system is 3d what is 3d that is a dedicated hardware and there is a dedicated software which are combined together to form a dedicated product which is embedded system so in the screen you can see there is a dedicated hardware means the pcb board with uh, all the necessary microcontrollers and everything is a dedicated hardware why i am calling it as dedicated hardware work? because it is designed designed only for switching on the tv and switching off the tv and the software is designed only to switch on the tv and switch off the tv so both this software and this hardware are integrated together to form a dedicated product which is tv remote control why i am giving tv remote control as an example because every one of us can able to experience because as principles are rightly said uh, we are not in a position to give hands on experience so the lab equipment is in our hand in our as a tv remote control so that itself is a good example for embedded system we can experience embedded system by the remote control what we have in our house so i am uh, satisfying the principles as uh, expectation where switching on the tv and switching off the tv is nothing but celebrating with embedded system that is how the remote control is given as an example here okay so from this slide the understanding here is embedded system means 3d where the dedicated hardware and dedicated software which are combined together to form a dedicated product so 3d is embedded system now the next question comes to our mind what embedded systems can do am i right or not what embedded systems can do embedded systems can do 3c what is that 3c the first c is control so uh, when we talk about control there are two types of control one is logical control which is called as on off control now you look at the screen here this is on off control one means on zero means off say for example and there is another type of control which is called as linear control so look at the screen here the volume control is called as linear control so control means there are two types of control on off control and linear control so embedded system can do both that means embedded system can switch on the tv and switch off the tv which is on off control through embedded system we can increase the volume or decrease the volume which is linear control that we all know so from this discussion we can understand embedded systems can do control what is the second c embedded systems can communicate communicate mean what let us take that same tv remote control as an example for uh, more convenience because that is one of the lab lab uh, equipment that what we have in our house itself so how can we say that embedded systems can communicate because look at the screen this tv remote control is communicating with the tv to control the tv whether it is a volume control or on off control from the tv remote control there is a wireless communication which is happening between the remote control and the tv in that context we can say that embedded systems can communicate what is the third c which is computing what do you mean by computation for example when we are pressing the button when we are pressing the button so which key we are pressing is identified by the program which is called computation after identifying the key press then communication takes place after communication controlling takes place all of us will agree from this so from this slide we can conclude that embedded systems can do 3c which is control communicate and computation so with respect to tv remote control after computation communication happens after communication control happens whether it is a on off control or linear control so what is embedded system 3d is embedded system what embedded system can do 3c is embedded systems can do 3c today everybody is talking about iot 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 so let us talk about that also what is iot next uh, thing is what is iot so iot means what internet of things as we all know internet of things but in our celebration iot is 3a 
oh what is this 3a so for example internet of things the name itself justifies it is internet so when a device is connected with internet then we can say internet of things to start with okay now let us see if a device is connected with internet then we can do anything anything is first a we can do anything can be done from anywhere at any time oh what is this anything can be done from anywhere at any time let us give an example so when you give an example it will become more comfortable for all of us let us take the common example of withdrawing money from the atm so in this context anything is withdrawing money so withdrawing money from an atm can happen from anywhere at any time because the atm machine is connected with internet i believe you agree this so because atm machine is connected with internet withdrawing money from any atm from anywhere at any time is possible i definitely agree that all of you will agree because everybody have an experience of withdrawing money from an atm hence we can say iot is 3a okay so embedded system is 3d embedded system can do 3c iot is 3a now the question comes is there any relationship between embedded system and iot embedded system nu thaniya nu solrume iot nu thaniya nu solrume rendu perukku edhaavadhu relationship irukuda abingiradhu and doubt namakku varudhu adu clarify pannikalam is there any relationship between embedded systems and iot now the question comes look at this diagram so keela or cloud irukku so there is an iot means internet cloud and there are devices the round round these are all the devices so these devices when it is connected with internet then we can say it is internet of things that means when an embedded system is connected with internet then we can say it is internet of things it's very interesting for example how an embedded system can be connected with internet so when the bits and bytes because it is when bits and bytes from embedded systems travels in a data bus abbi solrom when bits and bytes from an embedded system travels in a data bus to connect with internet then we can say embedded system becomes iot based system so is the, the question look at the screen is there any relationship between embedded systems and iot yes there is a relationship embedded system can become iot based system through 3b what is 3b when bits and bytes from embedded system travels in a data bus to connect with internet then embedded system becomes iot based system is it clear or not so let us say uh, let us give me an example for you to understand a little bit more comfortably so what is that example let us take printer printer is an embedded system when this printer is connected with internet printer becomes iot based printer that means printing can be done from anywhere at any time am i right or not okay so now the first celebration first celebration you can conclude like this abcd is a embedded system from this understanding we can conclude that 3a is possible that means we can do anything from anywhere any time is possible how through 3b that means when bits and bytes from embedded system travels in a data bus to connect with internet then we can do anything from anywhere at any time so 3a is possible through 3b for what to do 3c what is 3c to control to communicate and to compute we can you use this and using what a dedicated hardware and dedicated software which is combined together to form a dedicated product is embedded system so from this we can say that embedded system and iot can be understood as simple as a b c d is it clear or not now in the school days when we go to school first thing what we can learn is so from uh, what we can understand from this slide from this what we can understand from this slide as like when you go to school the first things that what we can learn is a b c d so similarly by remembering this a b c d we can understand what is embedded system what is iot and how they are related together in a simple words like 3a 3b 3c 3d so this presentation will be shared to all of us you can look at this presentation and forever we can celebrate embedded systems and iot as simple as a b c d so the first module is clear now now we can go for uh, some other interesting uh, topic major hardware module for embedded system is the next topic of discussion so as we all know microcontrollers are the major hardware part for most of the embedded system let us quickly refresh what is microprocessor and what is microcontroller difference between microprocessor and microcontroller through a story so normally we like story so normally we used to say once there is a king and there is a kingdom and rainbow colorful so like this by using the king kingdom and a rainbow we can try to understand what is microprocessor and microcontroller it's another second celebration today okay now let us look at the screen so understanding microprocessors and microcontrollers through king kingdom and a rainbow story it's very interesting so the analogy here is 
so the king the king here is shown is raja raja chola who has constructed the magnificent uh, temple even it is surviving after 1000 years so the king means so powerful so here king is compared with microprocessor that's very simple so in this screen you can understand who is the king which has such great personality means the king is a microprocessor why because look at the screen microprocessor is treated as a king because microprocessor is capable of doing several million jobs per second as we all know so why software engineers are paid in millions because software engineers are getting uh, work from these workers which is microprocessor so software engineers are getting work from these workers who can do million jobs per second hence they are being paid in millions i hope you agree this hence microprocessor is a king without microprocessor nothing can be done let us see the power of microprocessor in some few examples what we come across in our day to day life let us take the first example of uh, banking so nowadays banking is just like that possible just because of microprocessor so now around 100 people are here sitting in our house and we are connected definitely i believe that this is happening only because of microprocessor so the sitting inside in our laptop which is in the form of core i3 or core i5 or core i7 i hope you agree so making more than 100 people to interconnect together through audio and video is possible one and only because of microprocessor you agree similarly banking as we all know anything any time we can withdraw money from any atm is possible and railway ticket booking is happening just like that and the most wanted nowadays everybody will uh, appreciate amazon even from the 6 year old child to 60 year old uh, people we are very much comfortable in ordering the products using amazon so definitely all of us will agree this is happening only because of microprocessor so look at the screen here from these three examples we can understand that every domain is utilizing the power of microprocessors to improve the service quality performance etc is it right so what is the need of the day it is time for us to make use of these microprocessors to enhance the performance of our product and what is the situation today it is impossible to live without microprocessors nowadays whether we are a mechanical engineer or civil engineer or whoever it is it is mandatory for us to work with microprocessor independent of whatever engineer you are you are sitting in front of the laptop screen because it is complete electronics so in that way microprocessor is mandatory it is be a part of our life nowadays okay let us look at refresh this microprocessor and other things in a simple way through the next line so microprocessor as a king now we can say microprocessor is a king look at the screen it's very interesting a lot requested to look at the screen so microprocessor is a king which is called as chief minister okay so look at the screen it's a big celebration here so the is king alone is sufficient no king alone cannot rule the country so we need some ministers we need some ministers then only it will become a kingdom so even though microprocessor is capable of doing several million jobs per second it alone cannot do anything for example intel core i7 cannot do anything core i7 needs so many other things let us see what are those things quickly all of us know this but quickly to refresh i am taking i am sharing this what is the first and foremost requirement for the processor the first and foremost requirement for the processor is read only memory which is called as uh, wealth minister where the instructions and programs are read and it is getting executed what is the second primary requirement second primary requirement is random access memory what is random access memory where the data can be read and written through random access memory which is wealth minister to if microprocessor rom and ram is available then all wonders can happen several million things can happen as we discussed but if the user need to interact with the microprocessor if the user need to interact with the microprocessor then uh, it is very difficult to do something with this three when we switch on you can see only three black box when we switch off we can see only three black box if the user want to communicate then it is mandatory for us to have some more peripherals what is the next mandatory peripheral means now i can give a clue try to identify what is the next peripheral okay the clue is in chennai visakhapatnam calcutta tutigorin in all these places we have that peripheral i hope you have identified that peripheral yes it is correct the peripheral is ports so port what do you mean by port port is a place where exchange of goods takes place between two different medium one is water medium another one is land medium here exchange of data takes place between random access memory and the input output devices one and only through ports so if the user need to communicate with the microprocessor means there is a need for a port so without port no user can communicate with the microprocessor all the input and output devices can communicate with the microprocessor only through ports that we must understand so port is the next mandatory peripheral so there are two types of port as we know one is parallel port another one is serial ports so both are both of them are called as communication ministers or transportation ministers 
okay so parallel ports and serial ports where look at the screen the input and output devices are communicating with the ram only through parallel ports and serial ports which are called as transport ministers so whenever you want to do communicate whenever you want to communicate definitely there is a need for synchronization because i am synchronizing with you all and you are synchronizing with me then only the proper communication is happening whether whatever whatever i am speaking you are able to listen synchronization what do you mean by synchronization i have switched on my microphone all of you have switched on your loud speaker and because we are synchronized all things are happening clearly for synchronizing we need timers so without timer there is no possibilities of synchronization okay quickly to refresh microprocessor is a chief minister rom is a wealth minister one and ram is a wealth minister two and uh, there are parallel ports and serial ports which are called as transport ministers and we are talking about uh, timers for synchronizing both the transmitters and receivers so timer synchronizes both the parallel ports and serial ports which is called as scheduling ministers and finally there is an interrupt controller which coordinates all that means when so many peripherals are need to interact with the microprocessor and uh, all the peripherals need to request this interrupt controller the interrupt controller will schedule the peripherals to the microprocessor as we are know hence interrupt controller is called as administration ministers so microprocessor is a, even though it is a king it is not capable of performing all the tasks just like that microprocessor needs six mandatory peripherals so along with microprocessor there are seven peripherals which is needed which is from a microprocessor based system so which is called as ministry so now look at the screen for better understanding so there are some keyboards which are connected to the rs232 port so the keyboard and mouse is an input device which is connected to the rs232 ports old keyboards and uh, the later on it can become ps2 connector then later on it becomes usb connector these are all the input devices now look at this output device so output device is connected to the printer port and monitor is connected to the vgu port from this slide what we have to understand is whether it is an input device or whether it is an output device it need to be connected only through the ports only through ports exchange of data takes place like only through ports exchange of goods takes place between two different medium one is water medium and land medium here also external world and the digital microprocessor world exchange of data takes place only through ports this slide makes us to become more comfortable now the second celebration is coming to an end so like a king chief minister with all ministers from a kingdom and ministry microprocessor with all the peripherals from a microprocessor based system which is called as rainbow so there are seven mandatory peripherals as, as shown on the screen microprocessor rom ram parallel port serial port timer interrupt controller like seven colors in a rainbow which forms white light these seven modules forms a microprocessor based system so these seven, mo seven modules can be remembered as a rainbow so without these seven modules no microprocessors in the world will work work there can be 70 peripherals but among the 70 this seven peripherals will be available that you must understand so whenever you look at the rainbow you must understand there are seven mandatory peripherals which is forming a microprocessor based system is it clear now now look at the screen here can we justify seven modules for microprocessor based system i hope lot of people uh, those who are uh, working with microprocessors uh, from the past 10 years or 15 years etc they will agree that they were uh, using this 8085 microprocessor kit from bm micro system kit so look at the table here there is a microprocessor which is one chip which is 8085 microprocessor which is the first microprocessor even in the gate exam we are uh, getting questions only from the 8085 microprocessor because fundamentally is mandatory so fortunately we have studied 8085 more clearly that is why we are able to manage even up to arm cortex that's the magic i uh, like to convey right now so microprocessor alone is not sufficient so we need a read only memory which is 2764 which is available in the kit like this we need a random access memory and we need a parallel port which is 8255 which is called as programmable peripheral interface and there is a serial port which is called as usr universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter which is 8251 and there is a timer which is 8253 and there is an interrupt controller or keyboard display control which is 8259 and 8279 so from this slide i am justifying that there are seven integrated circuits available in this kit which forms microprocessor based system along with that there is an output device and input device output device is called as seven segment display and input device is called as a matrix keyboard so seven mandatory peripherals along with input output devices forms microprocessor based system so in this slide again i am justifying microprocessor kit whatever we have used we have all the seven peripherals and the ic numbers is also shown so those people those who have worked with this kit definitely you can celebrate now because again uh, it is again uh, another refreshing now look at the screen it's very interesting 
Finally, what is microcontroller? Now the question comes, what is microcontroller? So far we have seen microprocessor based system. What is microcontroller? A microprocessor plus all these mandatory peripherals in a single chip is called as microcontroller. Oh, so microcontroller means it is a single chip CPU. Now look at the screen, it's very important. Uh, the seven mandatory peripheral input devices is available in the form of a kit. But if you look at the, the simple 8051 microcontroller, which the that means whenever we start learning microprocessor, we have to start with 8085. Whenever we are starting, whenever we start learning microcontroller, it is better to start with 8051. For our convenience and comfortness, I have given 8051 microcontroller here. If you look at the block diagram of this microcontroller, we can understand that these seven mandatory peripherals are in a single chip. Say for example, there is a CPU, look at the screen, there is a CPU which is microprocessor and the flash memory is read-only memory and the on-chip RAM, there is a parallel port and there is a serial port, there is a timer, there is an interrupt controller, all are inside the single chip, hence it is forming a, it is a microprocessor based system is available in a single chip. So always we prefer microcontroller is going to be the major hardware part for most of the Android system, it's very interesting. Okay, now uh, look at the screen here. This screen will help us to understand much better. This is microprocessor kit with all the seven ICs and a display and a keyboard. But here, this is a microcontroller kit which has nothing, only the GIF circuit. So because the microcontroller contains microprocessor, ROM, RAM, parallel port, serial port, timer, interrupt controller, everything in a single chip. So only there are connectors in a microcontroller kit. So by comparing these two kits, we can understand microcontroller is a single chip CPU. Hence, instead of using microprocessor as a major hardware part for most of the embedded system, it is better to use microcontroller as a major hardware part for most of the embedded system. That is the understanding here. Okay. So anyway, the slide will be shared to all of you. Just listen to me. Don't worry about what is the text which is available in the screen. Later on, you can see in the offline. Now, the title of this uh, celebration is Understanding Embedded Systems, Real-Time Embedded Systems Using ARM Core. Okay, what is ARM? That is a very interesting uh, topic, which is our third celebration. So first celebration is understanding embedded systems and IoT as ABCD. I hope all of you are uh, celebrating that. But the second celebration, microprocessor plus all the mandatory peripherals combined together to form a microcontroller. That means a rainbow in a single chip is called as microcontroller. Something like that we can remember. Okay, now the third celebration is ARM, ARM, ARM. Everywhere people talk about ARM controller, ARM processor, ARM controller, etc. And again people say I am working with ARM Cortex, I am Cortex M4, ARM Cortex M3. I am using, we are able to see this word even in the board of studies also. A lot of professors are uh, hearing uh, from the experts. Okay, better include ARM processors, better include ARM Cortex M4 and all. Let us see what is the power of ARM. Okay, ARM, ARM. People are saying that ARM, ARM, ARM. What is this ARM? What is the need for ARM? What is the power of ARM? Let us look at that. This is the third celebration. Okay. Uh, nothing to worry about the screen. This is just to show the, some colorful nature of ARM. There is no, 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 nothing to share something about this. Okay, now look at, the, look at the screen. Why ARM is much popular? This is the need of the day. Why ARM is much popular? ARM is much popular because of three reasons. What is the first reason? When compared with all other microprocessors, ARM uses only approximately one tenth of the transistor. Say for example, if Intel processor uses 100 transistor to complete the job means, with this 10 transistor, ARM processor can complete the same task with the 10 transistors. ARM processor can complete the same task. And say, for example, if Intel processor or uh, Texas instrument processor using 100 transistors means by using 100 transistors completing one job, that means having 100 employees completing one task, but ARM can complete the same task without sacrificing the performance of 10 employees. So, accommodating 10 employees is less expensive when compared to accommodating 100 employees. So, this is possible just because of ARM. So, the ARM uses very minimum number of transistors. This is one of the best advantage why ARM is being used. Is it clear or not? Then the second interesting thing is because we have only 10 transistors to complete the task when compared with the other microcontrollers, 100 transistors. Uh, uh, power consuming by the 10 transistors is very less. That means providing power supply to the 100 transistors and providing power supply to the 10 transistors. So it is one tenth of the power. So when it is ARM means it is consuming only very minimum power. And because ARM is advanced reduced instruction set computing machine, which is optimized feature enhances the speed by reducing the propagation. Rate. The speed is also very high. 
So to conclude, very minimum space requirement, very minimum power consumption, and very minimum propagation delay. By having all these three concepts, we can say ARM is much popular. So these are three major benefits of using ARM. But low power consumption means what? All the battery operated devices like our mobile phone, every devices nowadays, whatever we are using, they are all battery operated devices. Because they are all battery operated devices, it is mandatory for us to use ARM processor because ARM processor is the only processor or ARM, ARM is the only solution which consumes only very low power. Look at the last row, all battery operated devices should consume only very low power. Hence, all battery operated devices use only ARM mostly. Even in our mobile phone uses uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, chip which has ARM Cortex-A series of microprocessors. Okay, now uh, you can understand the power of ARM. From this slide, the conclusion is ARM processor consumes very minimum power, ARM processor has very less footprint and ARM processor lot of advanced uh, peripherals which can perform the operations in very high speed. That's very interesting. Now the question comes, lot of people there is a big debate, is ARM a processor or controller? Someone of us say ARM is a controller, someone of us say ARM is a processor, Someone of us say it is not a processor or controller. Some of us will say it is a combination of both microprocessor and microcontroller. Now let us conclude now whether ARM is a processor or ARM is a controller. Okay, so that is a very interesting thing because a lot of people in the there will be a lot of debate. I believe I agree. I hope all of you will agree this. Let us conclude. It is time for us to finalize whether ARM is a processor or microcontroller or something else. The the conclude concluding message here is please say that ARM is a processor, processor, processor. Okay, hereafter there won't be any doubt, ARM is a processor. ARM is not a controller. Exactly speaking, ARM is a processor core. It's very important. Core means what? There are a lot of microcontroller manufacturers. These microcontroller manufacturers get the ARM processor core and keep it as a chief minister. That is very important. So that means ARM is not selling even a microprocessor. They are selling only IP cores. So some of the companies who are manufacturing microcontrollers, they are getting the ARM uh, IP core and they can add their peripherals and they sell it in the market and proudly they say that my microcontroller has ARM core inside, something like that. So even Texas Instruments is known for its uh, processor, but Texas Instruments are having a Tiva microcontroller saying that my Tiva microcontroller has ARM Cortex M4 processor inside. So ARM has its own nature, own powerful nature of ultra low power, very less footprints and high performance. Hence, microcontroller manufacturers use ARM as a processor core in their architecture and probably say that microcontroller. If you blow this much powerful ARM, what are the versions in our, we will see in one slide, which is very interesting. So this is what the ARM classical. So there is a vertical line. It's a very important slide, all of us, because celebrating embedded systems, real time embedded system through ARM core. In our title, ARM is there. So that's why I'm showing ARM. In this slide, there is a vertical line here. The left side of this vertical line is a classical ARM processor. Classical ARM processor means there was ARM7, ARM9, and ARM11 processor. Now look at the screen, there is an ARM7 processor core, ARM9 processor core, and ARM11 processor core was there earlier. Later on, ARM7, ARM9, ARM11, all are odd numbers, you see, 7, 9, 11, and 13. 13 means what? It is a ghost host. So people are afraid, I do, I do not know. Oh, 13, oh, if you keep the 13, ghost will come. So that's why they have named 9, 11, 7, 9, 11. After 11, they didn't keep the word in 13. They have named as Cortex. Something like that we can celebrate. So Cortex means, there are Cortex A series. Look at the screen here, Cortex A. This is the line. And Cortex R and Cortex M. What is Cortex A, which is application process? So all our mobile phone has ARM Cortex A57, etc. Say for example, uh, Samsung Galaxy Note. A mobile phone has Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. So the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 contains ARM Cortex, A3, uh, ARM Cortex A32, something like this. So this is Cortex A series are used for multimedia applications, which needs memory management unit and etc. Mobile OS like Android. And there are something like real time processors, which is called as Cortex R series. And there are something like uh, microcontrollers. So by looking at this only, people will uh, mis people are misunderstanding that ARM is a controller. Here you can look at the screen, microcontrollers and deeply embedded means, oh, Cortex M4 means Cortex microcontroller, like that people are thinking. It is not a Cortex M4 microcontroller. Microprocessors 
dedicated for the microcontroller manufacturers that is very important that is cortex m4 microprocessors core cortex m4 microprocessor core is very much suitable for embedded applications as well as microcontroller applications that is why in all the academic peoples we are not concentrating much on cortex a series and cortex r series we are focusing only on cortex m series now normally we used to have cortex m4 series of microcontroller cortex m0 cortex m0 plus cortex m3 etc so because it is directly related with these are all the processes which can do wonders for a microcontroller so a microcontroller manufacturers will purchase this cortex m4 processor and they will incorporate it and proudly say will they will say that okay my microcontroller has arm cortex m4 processor inside this is the understanding which is need of the day i believe that all of you are clear with micro uh, arm so that is the third celebration once again to understand look at the screen here look at the screen here there are so many companies which uses arm core say for example robert bosch all of us know robert bosch i'll tell you a small story here all of us know that robert bosch robert bosch is uh, manufacturing products for tata nano also as well as for rolls royce so the world's minimum uh, low price car also bosch is contributing the world's expensive car for rolls royce also robert bosch is contributing what robert bosch says you name any part of a car you will say what bosch product is something like that so then people ask robert bosch why don't you make manufacture a car because you are uh, supplying the products for all the cars from tata nano to the rolls royce why not you manufacture a car like that people ask robert bosch robert bosch said that now every car is released in the market bosch product is there and we are selling the bosch product if we manufacture a car means we, will, we don't want to disclose our secrets so if our car market fails means all our business will go wrong now every now today any car is selling in the market means bosch product is being selling like this like bosch even though bosch is doing uh, all the components of a car Bosch is not manufacturing the car. Similarly, ARM is manufacturing the processors core, but ARM is not manufacturing any chip. It is selling only the IP core. So these are all now look at the screen. These are all the companies who are manufacturing the microcontrollers, and they are using the ARM processor core. One of the simple example what we have in our curriculum is Atmel. I am highlighting this Atmel, Atmel microcontrollers and Motorola Pic microcontrollers. and qualcomm and infineon st microelectronics stm kits are most widely used in nowadays in texas instruments these are all the companies which uses arm processor core i hope you agree okay now uh, arm partnership companies so these are all the companies who are having a partnership with arm so now arm is very clear and uh, most of our syllabus have lpc2148 microcontroller this is the fourth celebration most of our microcontrollers in our syllabus has LPC2148 microcontroller. Hence, we decided to touch upon this LPC2148 microcontroller. This is the block diagram. Look at the screen. This is the block diagram of LPC2148 microcontroller. In this LPC2148 microcontroller, the highlighted portion is ARM7 TDMI. Yes, that means there is a microcontroller which contains microprocessor, ROM, RAM, parallel port, serial port, timer interrupt controller. Out of which the microprocessor portion is ARM7. That is Chief Ministry's ARM7. TDMI means what? T stands for thumb instruction, D stands for debugging facilities, M stands for hardware multiplier, and I stands for in-system uh, in-circuit emulation, and lot more. All of us know this. So here, the majority, ma uh, major important point what you need to understand is ARM is a processor core in an LPC2148, which is Philips company. Now it is NXP. So NXP is a company who is releasing LPC2148 microcontroller in the market, which has ARM7 processor core inside. So this is the magic here, which is being highlighted. So as per our rainbow, as per our rainbow, there is a need for ROM and RAM. There is a need for ROM and RAM. Now look at the screen, and now I'm. Uh, there is a processor here, and there is a ROM. There is a 512 kilobytes of on-chip flash memory, which is read-only memory, and there is a uh, data. There is a 32 kilobytes of RAM. There is a 32 kilobytes of RAM. So 512 kilobytes of flash memory and 32 kilobytes of RAM. Look at the screen. So microprocessor, ROM and RAM is there even in LPC2148 microcontroller. Okay, so now uh, there is a need for parallel port, right? Now there is a need for parallel ports. So microprocessor is there, ROM is there, RAM is there. The fourth peripheral is general purpose I/O. Parallel port is otherwise called as general purpose I/O. And again, one more important concept I want to tell you right now is ARM means 32 bit. 
so there is no arm processor in the world like 8 bit arm processor 16 bit arm processor whenever you utter the word arm always you must remember it is a 32 bit processor that means lpc2148 microcontroller is a 32 bit microcontroller that means any microcontroller which uses arm core means that uses only 32 bit microcontroller that is the mandatory requirement since the port is also 32 bit so as we all know lpc2148 has two ports 40 and port 1 port 0 contains 32 io lines and port 1 contains 16 io lines because of 48 pins as we all know so now let us look at the screen it's very interesting after understanding so this is the data sheet so when we are developing any embedded system looking at the data sheet is very important and looking at the block diagram and looking at the parallel port is very important after understanding the data sheet we have to draw the circuit diagram like this and this is the circuit diagram of one of the lpc2148 microcontroller circuit so this is the initialization circuit there vcc and decoupling capacitors and crystal oscillators and ground vcc all those things are connected after uh, making the circuit we have to make a board yes sir no we need to make a board this is the board this is the microcontroller development kit as principals are rightly said i am bringing the lab equipment in the screen oh this is the microcontroller board and you can look at the screen here this is a small square box which is approximately 1 square centimeter which is 64 pin quad inline package lpc2148 microcontroller so this is the microcontroller kit so for looking at the microcontroller we need to look at the data sheet for looking at the board we need to look at the user manual as we all know so by looking at the user manual of this kit this kit is from rido labs r h y d o l a b z i'll share all those details in the group forget about it so please be with me that's all so all the slides and all the technical know how we will be sharing in our group and later on we will communicate and clarify all your doubts first of all be with me don't uh, distract that's a humble request from my side so there's a board here this board contains uh, lpc2148 microcontroller all the necessary peripherals i'll quickly share about it so this is the again the front uh, view of this board which has lpc2148 microcontroller behind this lcd and there are leds here there are leds there are switches and there are input output devices as like this the front front portion of the kit rido labs kit and the back portion of the rido labs kit back portion of the rido labs kit etc and first and foremost interfacing is led if led blinks we'll stop blinking right if led blinks we'll stop blinking so the led is blinking here so that means that the leds are interfaced with the arm kit is something like this leds are interfacing with the arm kit is something like this uh, now uh, let us say the board is ready and we have to let us assume that software is ready whenever the software is running means how it runs let us uh, play one video for you understanding let us see the blinking of an led something like this i believe i believe all of you are able to see the screen are you able to see the video any one of you can respond is it possible for us to see the video yes sir it is any one of you yes sir we can see yes okay now look at the screen Mm. you can see the led is blinking is the led blinking you can see the led is blinking here right okay so the blinking of an led will help us confidence will give us confidence yes microcontroller is in our control so the first and foremost interfacing must be led interfacing the moral here is whenever we use any microcontroller the first thing what we have to do is we have to make a led to blink because we talked about a celebration because we talked about a celebration celebration means what if you are going for a marriage you know how do we identify the marriage house the house will be decorated with lot of lamps that's why we blink an led and the second important thing is if it is a celebration means definitely there will be a song people will celebrate with uh, by playing a beautiful song that's why after interfacing led we have to interface a buzzer because the screen here so this is the user manual which talks about the buzzer interfacing So let us see how the buzzer is the producing sound. The is producing sound. So let let me run this. And let us look at this. Let us come to the thing. Now let us listen here. Is it possible for you to hear the buzzer sound? So celebration means audio and video. So LED blinking first, then beep beep sound next. so the celebration so i am justifying yes celebration means there is an audio and there is a blinking of an led we are celebrating on lpc2148 with a rido labs kit okay very interesting now going for the next video so video is more interesting than uh, speech so i believe i are able to celebrate this video with a buzzer okay now going for the third video so music good music 
now integrating both now integrating both audio and video now integrating both audio and video let us see both it works like an indicator both audio and video then led glows buzzer is not producing sound when buzzer is producing sound led is not glowing so audio and video celebration with uh, lpc 2148 kit fantastic okay lag lab equipment has come to our screen kit has come to our screen program execution is happening in the screen we are celebrating all those things and uh, here in this video we are talking about timer so what is timer timer is necessary to produce a time delay so instead of writing a delay routine by using timer we can develop an application code here there is no delay routine in the screen so without any delay routine uh, with the help of timer we are blinking and lot more interesting things are there again the same blinking is happening here this is the fourth video and coming to the fifth video uh, we talk about pulse width modulation so before discussing about this uh, before seeing this video let us look at, have some discussion about the theory and then we will come back let me go to the slide let me go to the slide to discuss something about the pulse width modulation before that so we have discussed about the parallel ports and let us look at the serial ports let us look at the serial port of this lpc2148 microcontroller has four different serial ports look at the screen lpc2148 has usb because usb is much popular in our days any device that we have it is usb compatible hence it is mandatory for microcontroller manufacturers to keep the usb on chip and the usb is on chip in lpc2148 microcontroller which has a d plus d minus pin for our understanding and lpc2148 has i square c bus because i square c bus is very much important for on chip uh, sorry on board communication which is uh, clock based synchronization serial communication protocol where sd and sel are the serial clock i square c there are two i square c uh, serial bus interfaces are there in lpc2148 and spa what is spa serial peripheral interface serial peripheral interface is mandatory for our uh, sd card because it is one of the high speed uh, full duplex uh, serial communication protocol look at the screen it is ssp there is sound there is uh, spa is sound all the memory card uses spa communication so a lot of video audio video communication is possible just like that only with the help of spa serial communication protocol and most favorite alpha will celebrate only uart the most favorite uart is here so there are one usb two i square c two spa and one uh, two uart is there universal asynchronous receiver transmitter okay so there is a parallel port and serial port serial ports there are four different types of serial ports in lpc 24a there is a conclusion and as we all know there is a max to the redo which is a voltage level converter because uh, in the if it is a max to the redo plus 12 and minus 12 are the voltage and uh, 3.3 is the voltage to convert the voltage from 3.3 to plus 12 and minus 12 and plus 12 minus 12 to 3.3 this max to the redo is there and there is something with the timer here and there is something like an external interrupt here so microprocessor rom ram parallel port serial port interrupt interrupt controller and there is something like real time clock okay let us look at real time clock it's very interesting right real time real time so real time embedded system is our title real time embedded system is our title and so i'll take some time few minutes to discuss about what is real time okay uh, let us spend some time for real time so the next celebration what is real time the first question so quickly to say if the execution time is 100 percentage predictable then we can say it is real time so please try to understand you must utter the same word if the execution time is 100 percentage predictable then we can say it is real time okay to make it more clear what is real time clock if the execution time of the clock is 100 percentage predictable then we can say it is real time clock can we justify yes this we can justify look at the screen real time clock produces one second like 100 percentage accurately 100 percentage accurately means one second means one second it is not 0.9999 second or it is not 1.0001 one second one second means one second if one second is 100 percentage accurate then one minute will be 100 percentage accurate if one minute is 100 percentage accurate then one hour one day one week one month one year even 100 years is 100 percentage accurate but i do not know whether we are available to see how the after 100 years whether it is working or not so all the calendars in our mobile phone all the remainders in our mobile phone all the schedulers in our mobile phone our readers are as sent you the google calendar uh, notification this is just happening just because of real time clock so real time clock wherever there is a hours minutes seconds definitely real time clock is the only solution so remainder alarm calendar schedules are possible only because of our time the wrist watch whatever we are wearing the wrist watch the wall clock are also working just because of real time clock because there is 100% accuracy 
and the, uh, the second wheel and the gear wheel second wheel and uh, minute wheel and hour wheel in the wall clock are stepper motors as we all know stepper motors are the only motors which can do 100% accuracy in open loop control system hence there is no feedback in the wall clock but it is a stepper motor based control system which works fine 100% accurately because every uh, step is 6 degree 60 such 6, 6 degree is 360 degree the second wheel is directly connected to the stepper motor stepper motor is driven driven by rpc that means every every second rpc real time clock gives a pulse for every pulse the stepper motor returns 6 degree which is our uh, wall clock which is our wrist watch fantastic right so it, all the clocks are working only because of real time clock okay so the webinar is notified only because of rpc similarly if an execution time in an operating system for operating systems execution time is 100% percent we will call that as a real time operating system we'll talk about real time operating system later for time being okay now the real time real time clock means two important thing which you have to concentrate time and tide waits for none that is a formal uh, thing so if the power goes off time should not stop if the power goes off time should not stop so the lpc 2148 is on chip uh, real time clock so for that there is a v battery there is a, you look at the screen here there is a battery so we need to connect a battery we need to connect a battery to this and uh, this diode will charge the battery this diode will charge the battery as long as there is a power supply if the power supply goes off the display will di di uh, disappear but the clock will continuously run so to make one second delay 100% accurate there is a need for a crystal oscillator so crystal oscillator of 32.768 kilohertz will make the one second delay 100% accurately so i'll show you one the video with the real time clock where you can really appreciate this you can really appreciate this uh the real time clock uh, i'll show you it's very interesting um you look at this video it's very interesting to see i hope all of you are able to see the video i believe now look at the screen as told as told as shown here if it is a real time clock means there is there is a need for a battery and there is a need for a 32.76 kilo crystal then you will get a 100 percentage accurately one second delay that is the discussion which is happening here and uh, the lpc 2148 as a real time clock as told we have to look at the data sheet so this is explaining about how the how to use the data sheet and uh, now it is downloaded the code is downloaded and uh, you are through your communication we are displaying the time current time so this video was taken um, this video was taken uh, on year before that's why it is showing the current time look at the screen here look at the screen here it is 14th of 2019 tuesday 15 26 36 from this video i'm going to show you one very important thing so i am i have disconnected the power you see i have disconnected the power once again i am replaying for your convenience so it is showing 14 14th may 2019 tuesday 15 26 21 22 22 so even in the absence of power supply with the battery it has to work that was the statement i have given right so now it is usb powered uh, kit now it is usb powered kit now i am disconnecting the usb power now i am disconnecting the usb power you see but what is the time now which is the screen what is the time now which is shown on the screen the screen shows 15 26 and 36 seconds so when the power comes it should not start from 36 even in the absence of power supply through battery the clock has to run 15 26 you know 3 o'clock 3 26 36 seconds at least when i reconnect the power supply it has to display at least 15 20 30 37 see i am disconnect i am reconnecting it i am reconnecting this power supply and this is very important so there is change this display 26 36 instead of 26 37 if you refresh the screen if you refresh the screen you can see it is 27 and 20 seconds so even though there is no power supply clock is running that is the magic that is the moral we have understand this is because of the battery in the back side as shown so because of this uh, battery in the, even in the absence of power supply the clock runs this is the magic we have to remember forever when we talk about the real time clock which is very interesting okay now coming back to the slide this is very interesting good celebration now the very important pulse width modulation this is the time to celebrate pulse width modulation i look at the screen this is very important and uh, final part of our discussion um, please bear with me i'm just running out of time it's around 11:04 uh, let me take another 5 uh, minutes to finish up with your permission let me uh, take another 5 minutes and complete this statement um, sorry for uh, delay So look at the screen. It is a talking about pulse width modulation here. What do you mean by pulse width modulation? All the linear control in the world, whether it is a volume control or whether it is a brightness control in a mobile phone or a speed control in a quadcopter, 
all these things whether it is a motor control or whether it is a intensity control or whether it is a volume control this is happening one and only through pulse width modulation so with the following slides i am trying to make you to understand a very simple way how the pulse width modulation is helpful in performing the linear control what do you mean by linear control means varying the voltage linearly that is the mandatory if the voltage is connected to the volume volume increases or decreases if the varying linear voltage is connected to the led brightness will vary if the led the linear voltage is connected to the motor means motor speed will vary dc motor speed will vary that's all so the prime requirement is varying the voltage that's all so varying the voltage can vary the volume brightness and the speed that is the only thing which we can understand as you all know pulse width modulation is uh, represented with the due to cycle so the first row horizontal line zero percent due to cycle here 25 percent due to cycle 50 percent due to cycle 70 percent due to cycle frequency remains same and the width is changing that's why it is a pulse width modulation look at the screen it's very interesting so with this increasing with this decreasing so this animation will help us to understand so this is how pulse width modulation works and the next animation will help us to understand look at the blue color uh, mark so the average voltage increases when with increases the average voltage decreases when with the decreases it's very interesting and now look at the screen if the with increases the brightness of the led increases if with the decreases brightness of the led decreases this is how the intensity contrast control in a mobile phone is also working so the contrast control in a mobile phone is working just because of the um pulse width modulation now you can see rgb led all the three colors three control so our uh, philips hue lamp or uh, uh, wipro multicolor led lamps are working just because of this pulse width modulation so pulse width modulation is very interesting so pulse width modulation can be generated with the help of a microcontroller like this so uh, rest of thing will uh, theory so practically speaking so lab equipment has come here the led brightness control is happening because of the pulse width modulation like this and uh, speed control of the basic so do you want to see the pulse width modulation uh, as a celebration so you want to see the pulse width modulation as a celebration here now i'm going for a final celebration of pulse width modulation as an e bike because mechanical engineers are the ones you can celebrate this so i can increase the volume and decrease the volume by using pulse width modulation now you can look at the screen here e bike so there is a potentiometer here and there is a through potentiometer we can increase the acceleration and deceleration and you can able to hear the voice now you can see i'll show you i'm increasing the volume So when it is 1023, volume is high. That means I am accelerating. When you are uh, decelerating, the value will reduce, and uh, we can get the minimum sound. Observe carefully. When I reducing the potential, when I reducing the volume, means now it is zero. Now there is no sound. You see. Now I am adjusting based on the adjusting the uh, music volume is uh, adjusting just because this is happening just because of pulse width modulation, sir. That alone you can understand. Later on, uh, the offline we can do much. So this is the magic of pulse width modulation, which we have to celebrate uh, from this particular slide. And finally, finally, last few slides to celebrate the validity function here. And there is something like a direction control. So there is a hedge bridge here. Hedge bridge control helps us to change the direction of rotation. So one minute uh, understanding here, right? changing the direction of the current flow is done by changing the polarity right look at the screen here if i close the switch s1 and s4 the always the current flows from higher potential to lower potential so the top is vcc and bottom is ground so the current flows from here and goes into the micro motor like this from left to right if the current flows from left to right the magnetization will happen in one direction and the direction of rotation will be in one direction so let us take clockwise direction if i close the switch s3 and s2 the current flow will be in this direction this will become plus and this will be minus so the direction of the current flow changes so direction of the magnetic field will change and the so direction of the rotation will change this is very clearly visible in the screen in the s1 and s4 is closed means current flows from left to right so motor rotates in clockwise direction if we switch on q3 and q2 current flows in the right to left hence the motor rotates in anti clockwise direction so h bridge is a dc motor driver which helps us to make the motor rotate in both clockwise and anti clockwise direction so the conclusion here is whenever there is a motor there are two things which are mandatory one is speed control another one is direction control speed control is achieved using pulse width modulation direction control is achieved using pwm sorry direction control is achieved using the h bridge so one very good example in our car we have a power window so when we press one button motor rotates in clockwise direction so window comes down if we press another button motor rotates in anti clockwise direction window is closing so power window is a very good example forever we can remember there is a need for a direction of rotation control if the motor rotates in one direction window comes down motor rotates in another direction window goes up 
So direction control is also mandatory. Speed control is also mandatory for any motor control applications. So speed control is achieved by using pulse width modulation. Direction control is achieved by using H bridge. That is the moral of this discussion. And uh, all our house has a UPS. UPS is converting the DC supply to AC supply only through uh, H bridge. That you need to understand, right? H bridge uh, by properly switching. We are able to convert the DC to AC. That is the magic of H bridge. And finally, ADC and DAC. So temperature sensor means temperature sensor. Here it is a motor control. So ADC converts temperature into digital value and a microcontroller uh, makes some decision. And it adjusts the PWM where the motor speed control is switched. This is a closed loop control system with respect to the microcontroller and embedded system. Our LPC214 is capable of performing the signal processing also. Then it is a signal processing means microphone will be the input and loudspeaker will be the output. So wherever there is a microphone, there is a need for ADC. Wherever there is a loudspeaker, there is a need for DAC. Hence our LPC2148 has both ADC and DAC also. But there are seven peripherals along with seven peripherals. And there are so many other peripherals also. So here there is an ADC and ADC is here and DAC is here and lot more. Okay. So courtesy or my be, we need a dog. By dog, we will celebrate our validatory function. So why, why we need a dog? This watchdog. Watchdog is used to prevent the system from hanging. Watchdog is used to prevent the system from hanging. So whenever system hangs, there is no control or Dell button in our TV remote control. So as long as the, if even Windows itself is hanging, so the software in the TV remote control definitely it may hang. So it automatically uh, resets. It's only because of watchdog timer. There are some videos which are available uh, after this present live presentation. These videos will be shared. This uh, PowerPoint presentation will be shared. And all of us will communicate forever in the near future uh, through this uh, uh, team, through this team. So we are a powerful team as principal sir rightly said. So ECHOD madam, principal sir and Jayshree madam and uh, Sridhar sir and myself. We are a team, definitely we will be with you and all together can share our uh, knowledge as principal sir rightly said. Distance doesn't matter. So we can bring everything in the screen. Only requirement is uh, that is the need of the day. So with this I like to conclude our uh, my discussion and uh, once again I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity and if there is any discussion time now it's time for us to discussion thank you very much sir thank you very much madam uh, for uh, this wonderful opportunity I did my best sir oh, thank you sir participants can raise their questions in the chat box meanwhile I request uh, the coordinator to propose the vote of thing. In case of any queries, it will be addressed after the session, after the vote of thanks speech. Request the coordinator to kindly propose the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, good afternoon to speaker, respected principal, or department head, my dear colleagues and the participants. First of all, I would like to thank our head for giving me an opportunity to speak on this auspicious occasion and it is a matter of honor for me. On behalf of PhD Polytechnic College, I would like to thank our today's speaker, Dr. D. Giriraj, Department of VCE, PhD Polytechnic, sorry, PhD College of Technology for his wonderful and fruitful presentation. We hope the participants get benefited with your topic. Thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. B. Giriraj, for permitting us to conduct such a wonderful webinar. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to thank our head, Dr. K. Lakshmi Prabha, for her full support and continuous encouragement to organize such a wonderful webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Next, my sincere thanks to Jay Sri ma'am, organizer, for her helping nature and support from the beginning of this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Finally, thank you participants for your patience, listening and cooperation for the successful completion of this webinar. Thank you everyone who involved in this webinar for the grand success. Thank you once again. Sir, we have a question in the chat box. And there is one more question also. What's the difference between real time and general computing systems? So the question here is real-time system and uh, general computing system, correct? Real-time, as I rightly said, if the execution time is 100% predictable, then we can say it is real-time. For example, once again I am telling, today is 24th of June 2020. So take your mobile phone, take your mobile phone and uh, go to the calendar 
and fix 24th of june 2021 and say that uh, today is a, a grand celebration one year before we have celebrated like this if you keep an ala if you keep a schedule meeting after one year if you have the same mobile phone at the same 11:13 time it will remind you that one year before you have scheduled the time after one year i am reminding you so that means of this execution time is 100% real time i am telling the word i am repeating the word again and again if it is the word real time comes you must say it is 100% predictable now in the clock when we talk about calendar the clock is real time clock meaning the one second delay is 100% predictable hence we can say one year is 100% predictable so if it is predictable means then it is real time if it is not predictable means it is not real time so on uh, to add one more point the when you talk about real time people will say there is a hard real time system and soft real time system if they you know you utter the word real time there is a word called deadline if you are completing the task within the deadline then we can say it is if you are completing the task within the deadline we can say it is a uh, hard real time system if you are not able to complete the deadline then we can say it is soft real time system so if the uh, missing the deadline is not tolerable means then we can say it is hard real time system definitely we need a real time uh, operating system as well as real time processors some more we can okay we are allowing you even if you enter in 10 15 means this is soft real time system you are not strict to the time hence we can say it is soft real time system so missing the deadline is not tolerable means it is hard real time system and missing the deadline is tolerable means soft real time system once again i am repeating real time means 100 percentage predictable the execution time is 100 percentage predictable means then it is real time this is the only word you have to remember forever for the thing real time okay uh, the question another question in the chat is watch dog or watch time presented on computers present oh in computers have watch dog timer watch dog timer there is a timer called watch dog timer watch dog timer prevents the hanging of the system watch dog timer prevents the hanging of the system there is a message here whenever the system hangs we have a control alt del button in a laptop but none of the embedded system has control alt del button if the system hangs normally we will press control alt del or we press the reset button so pressing the reset button when the system hangs is done automatically by the watch dog timer present inside the microcontroller that means again why we are calling it as a timer we will fix some time uh within that time if the function executes properly means watch dog timer will never do anything if the function is not executing within the scheduled time then watch dog timer will overflow the overflow of watch dog timer is directly connected to the reset button so it will reset the microcontroller uh in simple words as a for fun if i want to say whenever uh, the kicker is not working in our two wheeler we will uh, slide the two wheeler and then we will kick it will work something like that if anything goes wrong switching off and switching on will work automatically in usually we used to say the switch off ani podu pala correct a vela seiyu appdin solluvom we used to say like that similarly when we reset the computer everything will become all right so the automatic reset is happening only because of watch dog timer that is the message here i hope uh, this f y z r w f have understood uh, i have answered your question right regarding the question watch dog timer who asked i do not know i believe i have answered your question Sri Hari is asking, right? Uh, embedded system needs an infinite loop. Why? So, let us take a TV remote control. To answer the Sri Hari, let us take the TV remote control. Remote control do not have on/off switch. Meaning, if we put a battery to the remote control until the battery becomes dry, the remote control is keep on working. Remote control is keep on working means what? It keep on scanning whether you are pressing some key or not. when you were studying the 12th standard or when you were studying the 10th standard your parents was not allowed to see the tv so you have switched, you have kept the remote control for 6 month without touching after 6 month if you press the button to switch on the tv even after 6 month the tv is switched on is just because of 24 by 7 whether uh, you are pressing or not 24 by 7 it is keep on uh, scanning the key so to continuously run 24 by 7 and uh, 24 by 7 we need the infinite loop so infinite loop is achieved with the help of while loop i'll show you uh, for a sriheri i can show you one uh, slide which will help you to understand much better uh, as told every uh, question is more valuable than every lecture uh, there are right now there are 65 participants 
So for those participants, I am sharing the screen, which is very important, which is very interesting. Uh, I hope all of you are able to see the screen. In the screen, I'll show you some uh, code here. This is exclusively for the screen here. Look at the screen, look at this code. This is the world's smallest embedded C code, sir. This is the world's smallest embedded C code. If you look at the screen, the screen, be patient. So now you look at the screen here. Once again, I'm repeating hash include lpc 214 xhs is a header file for lpc 248 microcontroller. If you are writing a C program, means void main is the main function. So this is the initializing the parallel port. One thing, uh, one message I want to convey here is when you reset the microcontroller, all the port will act as an input port for the safety reason. And there is a register called a direction register. By using this direction register, we have to make the port as an output port. So the port is configured as an output port by configuring the direction register in LPC2148. Here, all the ports of port 1, all the 32 IO lines are converted to the output port, which is initialization. So what code we write between void main and void 1 is an initialization code. Once again, I repeat, what code we write between void main and void 1 is an initialization code. Here, port is being initialized as output port by using this instruction. And here is requirement. Yes, there is an indefinite loop. So the definite loop is achieved with the help of while one. While one will run forever, even for 100 years, even for 200 years, as long as this code is running, this while one will execute. That means IO one pin equal to, this is one's complement of IO one pin. Meaning when it is one, it becomes zero. When it is zero, it becomes one. So it is keep on blinking. So this is the simple code, which is a blinking of NLED. Probably we can say this is the world's smallest temperature C code for ARM processor. Yes or no? Without these two instructions, no ARM processor in the world will work. So, from this slide, I am just conveying the celebration exclusively for Sri Gary and his team who are right now connected. Writing an embedded system coding is not complex. Nowadays, it is not necessary to learn architecture, instruction set. Look at the data sheet, understand the concept, and writing the code like this can make us to do wonders. Now, I am one more statement, one more uh, secret I am sharing with you all. Just by blinking of an LED, we can earn crores and crores of money. Can I tell you the secret? Just by blinking of an LED, we can earn crores and crores of money. Just I'm going to give the secret. All of you have the secret with you. Now you can see this slide. See this slide. Let us take a traffic signal, right? Nowadays, all the traffic signals, wherever you are, wherever you are, all the traffic signals are automated. As we all know, all the traffic signals are automated with respect to time. So all the traffic signals are automated with respect to time. It is just, you can assume it as a blinking of an LED. So look at this. The microcontroller is interfaced with the LED board, which forms a dedicated hardware for a traffic light controller. That means switching on the green light and switching on the amber light, switching on the red light, switching off the red light, switching on the green light. So it is something like a blinking of an LED. So switching on the lamp, green lamp at a particular time, and switching on the red lamp for a particular period of time, and switching off those three lamps in a proper way can help us earn several crores and crores of money, at least lakhs and lakhs of money. As we all know, the traffic signals are automated. This automation is not government. It is some private agency is doing this. So this private company is earning several lakhs of money for each and every signal per month just by switching on the LED and switching off the LED. So blinking of an LED or switching on of the LED is not a fun. That is the inaugural function of our celebration of embedded system. If that itself is focused much, we can make a traffic light controller like this and we can earn several lakhs of money. That is the message that we have to convey. So traffic light signal has to work 24 by 7. TV remote has to work 24 by 7. If you have UPS in our house, UPS has to work 24 by 7. So to make the embedded system to work 24 by 7, it has to be in while loop. The coding for that has to be written in a while loop. That is the need of the day. That is the primary requirement. I hope uh, Sri Hari can appreciate this. That is why there is a need for while loop. So embedded system has to run forever. That's why one more secret. No assembly language instruction has halt instruction because there is no need to halt because embedded system has to run forever. There is no halt instruction in any of the microcontroller because embedded system need not halt. That is the magic. Okay. So I hope I have answered the Sri Hari's question. Uh, there is a question, uh, sir, is it true that IOD will, on, will only have the future in coming years? Because, because of internet, we 60 people are connected together right now. 
so the learning is possible from anywhere at any time because we are all, all connected with the internet so thanks to reliance thanks to the companies who has provided this wonderful opportunity to interconnect 60 people together so like, there are a lot of professors here lot of students here sitting in your comfortable zone in your comfortable place where learning happens so the word i remember this word so where there is a will there is a way where there is a will there is a way yes we 60 people are willing to discuss right now so through internet there is a possibility so to answer this prayers internet is helping in all possible ways to connect together that means anything can be done from anywhere at any time so banking sector are using internet so paying money or withdrawing money is happening just like that railways are using internet railways are using internet so booking the ticket is possible anywhere at any time amazon is using internet so without any shop just like the 24 by 7 amazon is uh, serving the people just because of internet similarly uh, in future uh, it is mandatory for us to connect with the internet and uh, yes as you rightly said uh, internet of things because nowadays we have all the raspberry pi boards and all those things which has a wi-fi based internet connectivity so iot will be the future this i agree with you and it is mandatory for us to concentrate much on this 3a okay so as told abcd every a has its own significance every b has its own significance and it is mandatory for us to look at it okay so i hope i answered the uh, phrase question okay and there is another question from Nishantini. Sir, can you suggest good books for learning microprocessors and microcontroller? Okay. So for uh, answering Nishantini, uh, uh, for uh, Nishantini, do you know how to ride a bike two-wheeler and car-wheeler driving? I'm asking Nishantini, do you know two-wheeler driving or uh, do you know how to drive? I want... Uh, yes, sir, both. Oh, fantastic. Which book you have referred for driving? Any local author book or foreign author book? So what helped you to drive? You have your own answer. Shantani, you have to answer. You have your answer. Who helped you to drive? Which book helped you to drive? Okay. But dad with his experience, your dad taught you. And you are, you have experienced. Okay, if you turn like this, if you if you Yes, sir. No, by practicing. Yes, that's all. So practicing will teach us more than textbooks. To start with, you can look at the data sheet. You can look at some of the fundamental books that what we have. That will help us to do wonders. Nishantani, practice will make us to do wonders with respect to embedded systems. Because I'm proudly saying I'm practicing. We are practicing here. That is why whatever window I'm sharing, I'm sharing the video, working video. Video cannot be animated. Unless always if it works, I cannot show the video. Because we are practicing, confidently we are saying that, yes, it will work fine. So that is the magic of uh, embedded system. So practice makes perfect. Okay, so let us practice together. All of us can practice together and we can become expert in an embedded system. Okay, Nishantani, thank you very much. Any other question? So it's very interesting. Again, 50 people are here getting so many fundamental things. Normally, teachers and students means uh, every question is more valuable than every lecture. So by asking so many questions, we are able to understand so many things. Uh, beyond the presentation. So in the presentation, we have uh, planned something through this interaction, through this question answer session. Lot more uh, things are uh, learning. That's very interesting. Okay. Okay. Very nice. I think uh, it's time for us to wind up. And I thank once again um, Sridhar sir, uh, Jayshree madam, and uh, HOD madam for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be with you all. And uh, we will uh, communicate hereafter through the WhatsApp group, right? The slides will be shared. Some of the video links will be shared. In the offline, you can look at those videos. If there is any doubt, we'll communicate through the WhatsApp group. So this is an inaugural function. It is not the validatory function. It is an inaugural function to interconnect together. Through this inaugural function, we can all celebrate AB series of embedded systems and IoT and lot more. Once again, thanks for this opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm winding up. Have a good day to all. Have a good future to all. Be safe and uh, do wonders. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Bye bye. See you. Thank you, sir. I joined the coordinator and thanking the resource person. I, we had very interesting questions from the participants. I thank the participants.
and i thank the resource person for even more interesting answers i thank you all for joining again thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am participants are requested to fill the feedback link before 12 noon today